Hey, welcome to the Edge of Innovation. This is your favorite podcast about innovation and staying with the program. It's Disruptive AF. Welcome, listeners, to the inaugural podcast where we're talking about the defense entrepreneurship, the champions, and the mentors who dedicated everything they have to challenging the status quo in pursuit of a better world around them. I'm one of your hosts, Kinsley Jordan. Go by Trigger from now on. And also, one of my co hosts, Daniel Holter, with me. Welcome, Daniel. Hey, what's up, Kinsley? Dude, dude, it's so good to be with you. I'm I couldn't be more excited about bringing this podcast not only to all of our entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs that have great ideas, but I don't know about you. This it just excites me the ability to be able to share lessons learned in this innovative space because things have drastically changed in the last several years. Yeah, I mean, uh if you if you know me personally, you're probably familiar with uh having a hard time getting me to shut up about innovation. So this is this is my opportunity to do it in a space where nobody will will be bothered yeah <laughs> which is the which is uh, i mean to be honest that's kind of the nature of innovation somebody's going to get bothered about something at some point but that's really the heart of, uh, of frankly where innovation sparks from and comes from if you will so how did you how did you get tied into innovation to begin with because i know if you rewind the clock for me four years ago like it wasn't you it wasn't a word it wasn't something you could get into it was, it was not really even spoken of Yeah, I mean, so uh, I've been in the official innovation community for probably about two years now. But like a lot of the clubs that I'm a part of, I kind of forced my way in. But I've been doing innovation since I was, you know, a a young airman trying to fix things that I identified that were broken. So over, you know, a a decade or so of getting frustrated trying to fix things, uh, I finally just started studying what what caused organizations to actually successfully innovate and writing about yeah. it. Uh, and then over the last couple of years, I got uh, a little bit of attention on the stuff I was writing and got invited to a, a few more conversations. Uh, yeah. And yeah, so I've been been part of the conversation for for um, maybe a year and a half now. How about you? Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. It's you know the mindset of just do it, just just get after it, just start doing it is really a. Th- I feel like that's where a lot of us got started. For me, it was uh, when I showed up to pilot training at Vance Air Force Base, where you know we're in the middle of a pilot crisis, then you have issues, you know, OBOG's issues with the T6s that we were working through. And the creative juices and mindsets were flowing of trying to say, how do we, there's got to be a better way. There has to be a better way. Uh, and, and, you know, as we started looking at it, it, it was a realization we've been training pilots the same way for a long, long, long time. Even though technology had changed, even though processes had changed, even though there's so many better ways the industry was doing different processes and, and venues, but in a lot of those areas, we hadn't necessarily adopted that yet. So a couple of years ago, that's where I got tied into was um, how do we bring uh, you know the, the innovators edge, if you will, to pilot training, and then that you know the, got tied in with AFWorks and Spark Cells, and um, then you know the, the rest of the story is history. Is I just can't get enough. Now it's like it's not something you do. Innovation isn't something you do. It's someone you are, which has just been. It's been game changing for me. I don't know about you. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I guess I've always sort of identified as not not fitting into the normal culture of the Air Force yeah, because yeah. I was constantly questioning the way things were. Yeah. Uh, and it's been only in the last couple of years that I felt like in an official place and an official like a mindset that had been adopted that I could yeah. really get behind. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's that comes down to the current leadership at the top of the Air Force, honestly. Yeah. Yeah, man, I I I I feel the same way 100%. In fact, I, there's a couple times where it said to me, man, we just don't really know what to do with you. Like this you don't really quite fit in the system. Good, bad or different, that's just where it was for a long time until this mindset of you know, I, I kind of talk about the phrase of of bringing a simple solution to an everyday problem. I mean, that's a heart of what, what innovation is. That's literally what we're trying to do. It's not that we're trying to recreate, you know, the moon landing. We're just trying to solve the simple problems we have and find a better way of doing it. And that's that's really when you get to the purpose of this whole podcast is is why we're doing this. You know, because there's a lot of people just like you and me, Dan. Oh, absolutely, yeah. And I'd also like uh, one of the reasons that I'm interested in doing something like a podcast is that I discovered uh, when I started writing the power of just getting stories out there. Yeah. Um, yeah. That, you know, there are there are only a few people who are as disagreeable as me and willing to to like, <laughs> y- like push through uh, all of you're going to have to find that. Yeah. 
Oh, disagree. Okay. You, Disagreeable. You, you, you this yeah. is actually really interesting. Uh, yeah. Disagreeableness is uh, one of the aspects of personality that Malcolm Gladwell and Adam Grant talk about as yeah. one of the prerequisites for like an entrepreneurial mind. Yeah. And that, that doesn't necessarily mean a person is uh, unpleasant, although disagreeable people often are unpleasant. And I'm not going to say I'm always pleasant, but uh, what, what it is, is the willingness kind of to set aside how comfortable you are with an interaction and yeah, be willing yeah. to just push through it because you you value like what what you can get out of yeah just pushing a little harder yeah and creating that friction and i think that's where a lot of innovation comes from is that cut is like I, idea friction uh yeah. and what i want to do is lower the threshold so that it's not just disagreeable people yeah. who are participating in this because a lot of people are like no i I actually don't want to have that interaction or or risk my next promotion, you know, yeah. uh, in, in order to be a part of this. Yeah. You know, that, that reminds me of, of an example. And I think you probably sorted the, through this a lot yourself as well. But, you know, when you're trying to tackle an issue or problem set that you have, whether it's at a local base, whether maybe it's at a MatchCom or even higher level, a lot of times when you, one of my first steps is bringing the people who are involved into the space, into a room and just having a face-to-face -face meeting. And then setting the objective, hey, this is what we're trying to solve for. And the next thing immediately after that, that, that I try to let people know is, listen, we all have our frustrations. If we're identifying something that is in your wheelhouse or something you work on, we, we acknowledge you're probably just as frustrated as we are. But let's detach the connective tissue that is, that is our feeling that you know, we're failures because this isn't a bad problem. This is a problem. Detach from that and just focus on the issue itself. Because when we focus, just like you were talking about, when we focus on um, you know, the, the situation or the process, and we're all focused on how we can make that better instead of defending why we have done things the way we have in the past, it, it, we're able to move past that mindset of, of, I guess, running into disagreeable situations. Because the best idea, I don't know about you, but a lot of the discussions I have is, hey, let's just keep, keep the main thing the main thing and let the best idea win regardless of whose it was, regardless of how it came about, the best idea, the best solution needs to win in this case. Yeah, absolutely. And one of the, like, w one thing that I've been trying to push a lot recently, and I had the opportunity to to have an article published on this in the Strategy Bridge is, uh, and then uh, I recently had a TED TEDx talk that was based on that article. Um, and the the main thrust of it was that everything, everything that we build all of our systems, all of our processes, programs, and policies, they're all going to break at some point. Yeah. They're going to encounter situations like contexts and users where it doesn't fit. And we always need to be mindful that uh, we can't be in love with a solution. We have to fall in love with problems uh, and allow those problems, like whether a thing is continuing to produce value to guide whether we, you know, uh, like change the way things are. Yeah, and oftentimes that can total that can completely and totally get missed, um, depending on where you're at in this that system, and depending on what, what your interaction has previously been. And one of the one of the things we want our listeners to know first, again, thank you so much for listening to listening to Disruptive AF for our very first episode because it's exciting to not only have you as a listener, but also to make sure that you get connected because we want to hear not just the stories of of you know what our experience has been and our amazing guests that are going to be coming in but also we want to hear your experience as well so make sure that you get connected as we get ready to go to break here in just a second make sure you get connected not only on youtube but also to our facebook and social media pages with afworks and the disruptive af podcast you know daniel when we come back we're going to be talking about um, defense innovation just kind of as a whole and what that means because i think there's a lot of people uh, where there's words uh, there's words and in, in, in grammar that is used that, you know, it takes you probably a little while to actually figure out what that is. And I feel like defense innovation is one of those big, ambiguous terms that everybody knows what you're talking about, but nobody really knows what it is per se. So what do you say we talk about that when we actually get back? Sounds good. Awesome. Hey, you've been listening to Disruptive AF Podcast right here, a production of AFWorks. Defense innovation is made possible by the power of community and collaboration, which is why AFWorks created a chat workspace, the Innovators Chat, where you can connect with other like-minded innovators. Join more than 400 defense entrepreneurs already on the platform to discuss topics like software development, policy innovation, funding resources, books and media, and more. Find more at afworks.af.mil. <laughs> Thank you.
Hey, welcome back to the Disruptive AF Podcast, where it's your edge of innovation. We are here with our inaugural podcast right here. Myself, Trigger Jordan, and Dan Holter, your kings of, or guides, I guess you could say, guides of innovation for, for the Disruptive AF Podcast. Sherpas. Sherpas? Yeah, sure. Dude, I, I several times I've tried to put that on like a, a paper or document and people are like, what are you talking about, Sherpa? It's like, how do you not know what a Sherpa is? Anyway, anyway. So, hey, before we went to the break, we were talking about defense innovation. And it's one of these uh, almost big, scary uh, words, terms, everybody knows in, what it's in reference to, but doesn't necessarily know what that means. So real quick, uh, let's just dive into what does that necessarily mean? When we talk about defense innovation, when you use that term and when we use the term like disruptive innovation, um, for a lot of people, especially senior leaders, these terms can kind of be... Uh, no, we'll go ahead and say maybe a little bit scary because it's 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 contrary to what has previously been. So first, let's start with defense innovation because I know you got some great stuff to share with that. Yeah, absolutely. I, I definitely have some opinions on on defining the word innovation specifically because that's that's a lot of people's first order of business when we when we start talking about like building up an innovation cell. They're mm -hmm. like, well, what specifically is it that innovation? does yeah uh and and i i've uh, come from sort of a design thinking background and one of my favorite concepts of design thinking is to diverge before you converge and that yeah. just means that if you want to if you want to make something that's useful that solves a problem the first thing you do is not to narrow your focus the first thing you want to do is identify all of the things and that's yeah. the that's yeah. the divergent process and i think that defining innovation in a in a really narrow specific way is is a form of converging before you've sufficiently diverged so when yeah. i talk about innovation i'm just talking about somebody is experiencing a problem that problem is real and innovation is the process of introducing a thing that solves that problem or yeah. is useful to eliminate a pain point yeah you know, as you bring that up so many times, I think a lot of people fall into this rut. Frankly, I've even fallen into the rut before where when somebody does bring up a problem set, immediately you try to dive in and fix that thing um, without actually doing exactly what you talked about. Taking that step back, looking holistically and say, okay, what are we even trying to do right now? Because there's been there's been a couple of times where you get step, you know, step two or step three into trying to create the solution only to find out you're creating a solution to the wasn't something that wasn't actually the problem. And you never took enough time to take that step back that you're talking about to actually see what the actual issue is. And that it's very frustrating to get to that point, but you're absolutely right. It's like that divergent mindset of taking a step back. That's huge. That's huge. Yeah, for sure. And we were just, I was just having this conversation with a few people over on our new uh, innovation uh, chat space on Mattermost over on platform one. Um, and we were talking about the idea of policy innovation uh, and how could we create this this process that allows policies to be updated when they're not functioning and somebody brought up the idea of using artificial intelligence and they were like hey you know maybe maybe daniel holter wants to come in and help facilitate and i was like the first order of business is let's stop talking about solutions because if we go into this like we're going to do an ai project to solve this problem we're going to end up with an ai solution that yeah, might yeah. not have even addressed the, you know, the existing problem. So somebody brought up, let's, you know, that seems like a big elephant to eat. And I was like, yeah, I hate getting halfway through an elephant only to realize that there's a more important elephant I should have been eating the whole time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and then there's kind of an almost a counterpoint to that because you'll encounter some people who say, listen, we don't have time to talk about policy and strategy and all of these other things like cut the fluff and get to the meat and potatoes why why is it so important that you that you take into account what that fluff is because there's some people you know who just want to get after the work would say we don't have time to talk about that there's a problem let's go fix it um but at times that's almost dangerous if you don't take into account uh, what those guiding principles what those general guiding principles are at the very beginning yeah absolutely and i also like it's to me it's really important to clarify that innovation is not an efficient process so if you're trying to impose constraints on our like how we're going about identifying you know solutions like okay but let's not let's not diverge too much um then you're you're not going to actually you're not going to get to the heart of what the actual problem is and you're going to end up wasting a whole lot more resources like 
I, you know, sadly, a lot of the solutions that the Air Force has given us over the years, these waterfall software solutions yeah. uh, are hugely wasteful. Uh, when if you look at like agile development where they spend, you know, a couple of months actually digging into the heart of the problem and what that yeah. problem feels like to users and why that matters to them uh, before they even before they even put a single line of code down. Uh, yeah, that is a more efficient process because you don't end up going down a bunch of false roads. Yeah. Yeah, completely. And I think that's a perfect segue into our discussion about what does it mean to be disruptive? You know, why do we why do we even name this podcast called Disruptive AF? Because, you know, when you use terms like this, words mean things. I've learned that. I maybe it's taken me a long time to learn some very basic things, but apparently words mean things. And for a lot for a lot of people, when you say, hey, you know, man, we want to be have disruptive innovation for the policyholders, that's pretty terrifying, especially for people who are like programs of record or or you're talking to these uh, you know, senior leaders that they they have been more immersed with how things have been than what things necessarily could be when we're talking about disruptive. And there's just one of those points that I want to make is that, you know, a lot of times when you talk about disruptive innovation, uh, people look immediately at disruptive as a volatile, negative, toxic word. And I know toxic gets used a lot in our culture, but I mean it in the sense of it has this negative connotation to it. But I see the flip side of it. When I see it disruptive, I see the opportunity for things to be broken down, you know, almost like Legos. When I was a kid, you know, build something I didn't necessarily like, I'd have to break down the blocks into individual blocks to be able to rebuild something that was actually useful or something that I actually wanted it to be. The disruptive is not destructive, but instead it's actually creative in nature. It allows you to begin at the beginning holistically to get a good holistic picture of where you want to go and what you're doing, just like you were talking about with some of those programs. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I like to think about it sometimes like how forest fires are a necessary component of a healthy ecosystem, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's impossible to engineer a perfect forest that won't ever need to have like, you know, some storms or some forest fires come through mm -hmm. and wipe out all the rubbish. Uh, so, and then the other thing is that uh, if you don't, if you don't kind of attack yourself, like, a good example is actually exercise. What are you doing when you exercise? You're tearing muscle tissue. Uh, yeah, you are yeah. damaging yourself. You, uh, yeah. If you don't attack the system yourself in, in like a controlled way, then something else is going to attack it and it's yeah. going to go a lot worse when it, yeah. when it fails catastrophically. Yeah. And, and, and I think this whole COVID-19 thing is a perfect example, a perfect example of why it is so important to allow disrupt. Uh, if I can... I don't know even know if there's the word disruptivity to exist within the system and why innovation is so important. I just coined that word. Coined that word. Yeah, it, it is now. But di disruptivity into the system because either nature will do it or you can allow that to naturally happen within your system, but it's going to happen either way. And I think this whole COVID-19 thing, you know, w there's a lot of areas where there may have been abilities for people to telework, but as an Air Force, as, as a culture, we definitely were not optimizing that potential by any means at all. So what happens? People are not able to go to work. There's the requirement for social distancing. And now you have these programs that are popping up all over the place, enabling people to work more efficiently, more effectively, and continue on what they're doing. I mean, this COVID-19 thing has been totally disruptive to our system of what we're normally doing. However, oh, yeah. it's been critical in growth. I've actually seen more growth in this, in not only industries, but even private businesses as well. I've seen more growth than I have necessarily destruction. And I'm not talking about like what the market does. I'm talking about uh, this disruptive mindset of saying, you know what, there's got to be a way to do this and we have to do it right now. I could not agree with you more. And that's such a, that's such a great point that uh, the, the situation we're facing right now is a good example of things failing catastrophically. And mm -hmm. we've seen it a lot where the, I mean, the innovative mindset right now is exploding. And yeah. what I would love to see on the other end of this is not just people see it as an opportunity to innovate, but also an opportunity to think about how we facilitate innovation after this. Yeah. Are we properly red teaming our own yeah. systems and our own processes and policies? Uh, because I know that there have been a lot of us out there sort of you know, raising the red flag on communication systems in the yeah. air force yeah there, I, there's a ton of people and and yeah. a lot of them just got sick of saying you know got sick of fighting so they yeah. kind of shut up and and now that 
everything's kind of fall, fallen apart with communication, with connectivity, with how we do recalls and how we, you know, how we yeah. set goals when our normal kind of dysfunctional systems fall apart. Uh, I, I'd like to see a little more of, let's think of in terms of what if everything failed catastrophically right now and make yeah. things fail in a controlled way so that we can innovate continuously so we don't have to deal with those catastrophic failures. Yeah, completely. And to boil it down, I'm a, I mean, it almost comes down to a single point. You can choose you can choose when and how disruptive innovation happens or just disruption happens, or you cannot choose and allow it to happen to you. One of those is being proactive and one of those is being reactive. And we both know how proactiveness goes. If, if The more proactive you're being and allowing that into the system, and I loved your example about the forest fire. I mean, it was perfect. A forest fire is absolutely necessary to the ecosystem of, of, of what they are. Nobody likes a fire. Nobody likes the damage that they cause. However, it does allow new creative growth. It allows new growth on the areas that absolutely needed it. And so when, when if, if there is, I guess, one point that we would encourage uh, people to, to, to think about, especially senior leaders that are going to be listening to this, is don't be afraid of what disruptive means. But in fact, the more that we can encourage this into our system, and of course, you know, there's going to be balance to the left and the right that we need to stay, stay in between for that. But as the, the more that we can allow that into our system, the better that we are doing enabling our people to come up with those solutions that we needed five years ago. 100%. Yeah. Totally. So with, with with that, you know, you've we've been in this innovation circuit for a while. We've had the, the ability to rub rub shoulders and elbows with, with people that have just been doing a, a you know phenomenal stuff. What's a project that really s sticks out in your mind of just kind of the ground this ground up movement of what innovation is of people seeing a problem and just building it up? Well, so I, I mean, I've been heavily focused on my own projects uh, just because I'm, I'm, you know, I, this is like a unique opportunity for me to not be sneaking my my innovation projects yeah. during yeah. work. Yeah. I'm like, I'm stuck at home. I can't do my normal job, so I I, I can dig into the stuff that I like yeah. have been yeah. dreaming about. So I yeah. launched this thing this week called Project Agitare, and it is a community of practice for defense and national security community facilitators and that's people in the field of like human-centered design design thinking uh all that all that stuff where somebody who's like an outside facilitator takes a group through exercises to yeah. kind of facilitate this uh you know increased communication increased psychological safety and it's really good for ideation for team building for like building visions and it's also really yeah. good for development of of innovations so i got to launch that uh on the center for adaptive warfighting uh podcast this week in a in a pachacucha or pechacucha format which is a really cool like timed uh, PowerPoint presentation. You should check it out. I think I'm going to have a video of it. Soon. Can you say that again? Because I don't know. I'm not tracking on that one. Depends. I, it depends on who you talk to. I've seen it pronounced Pechakucha. I've also seen it pronounced Pachakucha. It is a Japanese word that means chatter. And huh. just to sum it up really quick, it is 20 slides advancing, like auto advancing 20 seconds each. So you have to perfectly lay out your presentation and it forces you to really like get to the point it's six minutes and 40 wow. seconds i think yeah. of just you know get to, get to the point it's my favorite it's my new favorite way of presenting things it's way better than any any normal powerpoint presentation wow. so, you, so you got to pitch pitch that there yeah so i i launched the program uh i think last week on linkedin and i had like I don't know. It was like 150 people just like jumped on it and, and they were so excited that this was, you know, cause there's the, the problem that exists. And this has been my experience as a, as a facilitator of design thinking is I was in an in innovation center for a little while for like eight months. Yeah. And then, and I learned all this stuff and we had a team and we were supportive and we were doing all this practice and dry runs and retrospectives. And yeah. then I came out to my new assignment at Hawaii and I don't have that support anymore and i'm trying to convince people to let me facilitate their stuff and it is yeah. difficult to get people to convince people that i can i can produce value they they just want to focus on mission and i'm i've had one opportunity to do this where i helped uh, my flight scope out what problems we were facing and they loved it and they were like let's do this next training day and then that's that's going to be in a couple months and i'm like yeah. that's not enough so this this uh, community is meant to to like 
kind of help us support each other in finding opportunities to practice uh, facilitating sessions, but also we're, we've got a facilitators directory now with uh, eight volunteers who are willing to facilitate for organizations around them in the defense sector. Uh, just like if you free facilitator, man, I, it's, it's yeah. a, it's a great opportunity for you and, and also for them. So uh, I think what we're going to do next, like our next project with uh, project Agitari is going to be, how do we make staff meetings function better with a facilitator, bring a facilitator yeah. in there, get, you know, the most value out of a staff meeting. And I think that could be a really good proof of concept for the facilitation you know, facilitated framework method. Yeah, yeah. You know, a, a lot of, as I look at Spark Cells and I've had a lot of connectivity, I, I uh, helped to run the Spark Cell Advance. Um, but more than anything, I've had the opportunity to be able to help and pour into a, a bunch of different Spark Cells as I work with Tony Perez at AppWorks, who's the capability lead for Spark. And one of the things I noticed is literally that's one of, that's one of the biggest things at the heart of a Spark Cell or the heart of an innovation cell is that we basically become uh, consultants, if you will, or um, what was the term you use? You just use it. Um, yeah, facilitator. Facilitator, yeah. You become a facilitator yeah. of problem, problem solving all the way across. And a prime example of this literally now, you know, there's uh, I, there's not enough time on this podcast to talk about a lot of the projects that I think both of us have seen and been able to have a part of and just the impact that they've had. I'm talking about not just impact at your base, but impact all the way up to the numbered Air Force, to the MAGCOM, literally changing the Air Force. Um, but one of the things that I just noticed recently is, you know, it takes a little while to build a culture of innovation to the point where people want to come into the innovation cell. They know that when they come in that you're going to be able to help them. You want to assist them. Your entire focus is on is enabling them to create a, uh, you know, create a solution to their problem. So one of the awesome things I saw recently, just uh, literally last week, a couple weeks ago, our public affairs released an article on it. But um, our med group commander came in and said, listen. We're running out of N95 masks. I mean, this is as real as it gets. We're running out of N95 masks, um, which are the the COVID, uh, the, you know, the COVID-19 masks that the med medical uh, uh, medical teams are using. They said, uh, and it, you're not. We're not going to be able to get more in. We have to find a way to create uh, a longer life of these masks. Um, is there a way that we could build a sanitizer? And, uh, dude, I don't know. I don't know anything about sanitizers. I have no idea. But I know the people who know uh, things about sanitizers said, hey, we'd love to facilitate a meeting for you guys. Have your med group, exp your med uh, team experts come over. Uh, we'll reach out to a couple of people who have some knowledge in this in this area uh, and we'll do it. And sure enough, man, they sat down. I just sat there with a cup of coffee and watched the magic happen. That's just that's, that's what I do. I just get to sit in the room and watch the smart people do the smart things. But, but, but I got to see these people come together and talking about, I mean, the things they were talking about, about UVC light and sterilization and how long does the light need to be on and before it's actually... Um, uh, you know, breaks down the material too much and how much power and how much water just needs to be done. And they literally created this sanitizing bot right there in front of our eyes, just with the ability of open discussion, open communication, throwing everything out on the table and saying, hey, what is the best way we can do this? Uh, in the course of, I think it was 24 or 48 hours, they created this first, uh, this first uh, prototype and they're using it and they're still using it. And ex it extended the life of being able to keep those N95 masks um, and, and reuse them on a person-to-person -person basis. So a person got issued their mask and then they kept their mask. And, you know, they were able to draw out the numbers of how long the mask is good for. They can sanitize it three times and then they have to throw away. But that's one perfect, simple solution where, you know, a lot of times people look at innovation and say, well, what are you doing? What are you doing for me right now? But they don't realize is that innovation is not something you do at a po point or moment in time. It's someone that you become. It's part of your culture. And you start thinking about solutions. And you start thinking in a creative, innovative way, in a way that allows you to create solutions at the time that you need them. And that's what's so exciting to me just about you know defense innovation. That's what's exciting to me about this disruptive mindset. That's that's what excites me when, you know, when you're talking about um, the ability to facilitate these conversations is because... When you're, when you're focused on the mission all the time, sometimes you need somebody to just tap you on your shoulder and say, hey, um, I, I got some ideas. I, I see you working really hard. I see some ways that maybe we could help you. Would you like some help? And that's, yeah, and that's what this is. That's what so this much. is. Yeah, so, and we're, we're, we tend to be stuck in, in uh, like convergent mode. We're, we're, we've got our heads down. We're focused on the mission. And then there's, yeah. you know, there are people diverging around us. I love yeah. that example of these these innovative teams that are popping up everywhere to respond to the COVID-19 crisis because I've yeah. seen the same thing locally just within my flight producing these cloth masks now that they're 
basically a, a you yeah. know mandatory in a lot of places on yeah. base. Uh, but I mean, this is a good example of of uh, you know the power of communication, honestly. Because I gotta I gotta talk with you after this about that uh, UVC solution because i got a guy looking for something to, to sanitize the inside of, of uh, awesome. cargo planes yeah. yeah um but you know what i like to say about the the power facilitators and why we should all be embedding them in units is because this is an example of what happens when everybody clearly knows what the problem is we've yeah. got covid19 came in and it was like hey i've got a bunch of problems for you and just yeah. dumped them in our laps gave us a bunch of free time to sit at home and think about how to fix them right yeah. so yeah. it's kind of like tailor made for you know like self producing innovations to solve its problem what i like to you know what i'd like to see in the air force is that we create processes that cause those problems to emerge and that's what facilitators can do is they can they can facilitate what's called uh, continuous discovery and when you do continuous discovery you don't need a problem to come along because you can they you can pull them straight out of the ground they are they are there just barely under the surface yeah and with a yeah. good facilitator just guide like i can guide your flight through a couple of exercises over the course of an hour and a half and i guarantee you i we will get them to say things that they never said to their flight chief that they never yeah. said to their commander uh and the and then you've got like a perfect opportunity let's get to innovating and yeah. because once COVID 19 is over we're gonna go back to all right it doesn't seem like there are that many problems because the mission's going right so we yeah. need to yeah. we need to facilitate this continuous discovery so that we can keep tapping that latent potential that we're seeing like explode right now yeah yeah Man, that, that that could not be more true, it, that we need to keep this mindset going. And as we're dealing with, you know, not just COVID-19, but as we're in these uh, in these environments where we're creating solutions where we need them, no kidding right now. One of the things that I continue to reiterate, because um, actually next week we'll probably talk about uh, th this this national task force that has stood up from the from the inner workings of what AppWorks has been doing thus far, um, which has led to no kidding like a national scale. We'll talk more about that next week. But one of the things I continue to remind people is that listen, we don't just need a process for the next two weeks. We need to ensure that we are creating the pathway such that this can continue on. Um, that that the capabilities that we built here and now have the ability to continue to grow over the next year, over the next several years, because a lot of the problems that are literally being addressed right now are not problems that just exist because of the of a pandemic. They've just act they've just been shown in more light because of the pandemic. The problems that Absolutely. existed for a long for a long time. Now they have just truly come to light for what they actually are. And I love that you said right beneath the surface, because you know a lot of times when that still waters out there in a beautiful ocean, you have no idea what's lurking underneath them until you break that surface and you look down and you see, oh my gosh, like I had no idea that these problems were right there. The pandemic, honestly, the whole COVID-19 thing uh, is, is kind of stirred the water, which is a great opportunity for us to be able to seize these moments and bring those solutions. So one of the one of the uh, people I'm really excited about to, to talk about next week as we talk about our next episode, man, we've already blasted through the first episode. I can't believe it right here on the Disruptive AF podcast. Crazy, crazy. It's wild. I cannot believe it. But next week, um, join us once again. This is going to be a weekly event where you it needs to become a normal part of your life. I want you to stay tuned because we're going to be talking to Tony Perez, who is one of the capability leads for AFWorks. And he's actually one of the people who uh, leads Spark uh, spark cells, the spark lead for AFWorks. So if you've seen spark cells popping up uh, at your bases, if you see these innovation cells coming up, um, Tony Perez is the one who's leading the charge and not only getting them plugged in and educated on what does this process look like, uh, but really enabling them to be able to move forward uh, in their own in their own units and their own organizations in their own wings. And the thing that I love the most that Tony does is that he makes sure that people understand that innovation needs to be customized to your organization and your unit. It's not a cookie cutter. It doesn't need to be a cookie cutter. It needs to fit with what makes sense for where you're at, what your organization needs, and what your guys' mission is. And that sometimes looks drastically different. But you know what? That's okay. That's huge. Huge. Dan, parting shot. Parting shot to our viewers tonight on uh, today on the Disruptive AF podcast. What's the most important thing they need to take away from today? Man, I think uh, I think that everybody needs to take stock of what it feels like right now to see all this innovation kind of popping up around them and see like what what potential exists in your unit, what potential exists in your flight. You got these people who are eager to solve problems once they know that once they know what they are. And I want people to hold on to how that feels 
because yeah. as soon as these problems are gone, we can find more problems. I guarantee yeah. it. Yeah. 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 Now is the opportunity. I heard somebody uh, say on, on uh, another conversation that I was having earlier that, that you can look at something as a tragedy or you can look at it as an opportunity. And that's so true. Uh, even based on what, what we're going through right now. And even going back to your examples of the forest fire, you can look at that and say, oh man, that's terrible that happened. Um, or you can look at the opportunity that it presents and the new growth that is going to come from it. Of course, you know me. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm an optimist pretty much through and through all the way. So I'm always going to find a way to be able to do it. But gosh, I feel like innovation does that. Um, and we are well, so glad I'll, to be able to, yeah, go ahead. I'll see if I can bring you down over the course of this podcast. <laughs> get out of here. You can't do it. It's not possible. It's not possible. Well, hey guys, thanks so much again for listening to Disruptive AF right here. Your favorite podcast during the week, keeping you close and connected to your innovative edge right here for a Trigger and Dan. We'll see you guys next week. Make sure to like and follow the subscribe button and the bell to make sure you get notifications each and every week of the great content that's rolling out of here, the Disruptive AF podcast. Dan. Thanks. See you guys. <laughs>